So if you ended up clicking the video because of the title being how much does RAM speed actually matter, then I'll go ahead and answer that right away. For gaming, it is nothing that you're going to notice a difference in because of the performance increase being such a small amount. But if you're a content creator or if you're multitasking, which comes alongside with content creation and a lot of other things, that is where you're going to notice the big difference. So let me explain everything that you need to know about RAM speeds, what RAM does, how to choose RAM for your PC, and how RAM works inside of your computer. So for the first thing that we need to talk about is overclocking, because by default, DDR4 RAM stock maximum clock speed is 2133 megahertz. When you see RAM with speeds rated over this, it means that the module is rated to be overclocked to that speed. You may see mention of something about being AMD or Intel compatible, and this usually refers to the XMP profiles built in. This indicates it has profiles built into the module that allows your motherboard BIOS to automatically overclock your RAM to manufacturer specified settings. Even if it specifies either AMD or Intel, XMP profiles will usually work with either one, but you'll need to check with your motherboard specs. Most of the popular high-end RAM, such as Corsair, have built-in profiles no matter what RAM you get, but generic cheaper brands will not have them and you'll need to overclock them manually. Faster RAM speeds allow your processor to access the data stored on it quicker, giving your system a boost in processor performance. So what is RAM? Random access memory is used as temporary super fast data storage for your processor or CPU. When you launch a program, the hard drive sends the relative data for that program to the RAM, where the processor can access it much quicker than on the hard drive. So how does RAM work? Random access memory is an integrated circuit chip made up of millions of transistors and capacitors. Each pair of transistor and capacitor make up a cell, and these cells are where the data is stored. These cells hold and release electrical charges to write, rewrite, and erase data, allowing data to constantly change much faster than your traditional mechanical hard drive or HDD. That uses platters and actuator arms or even SSDs. RAM is also volatile, meaning that any data that is held within its cells will be lost when it loses power. This is why we don't permanently write data on our RAM modules. The random access part of random access memory comes from the fact that data can be written to any cell in any order and can be read from any cell as long as the physical location of the cell containing the data is known. So what does RAM speed do? RAM frequency works off of clock cycles. Each read and write is done on a cycle. RAM is measured by how many cycles per second it can perform. For example, if RAM is rated at 3200 megahertz, it performs 3200 cycles per second. The more of these cycles that happen per second, the more data can be stored and read, making for a smoother user experience. So now let's talk about the bandwidth and capacity. RAM speed doesn't exist in isolation. You also must consider bandwidth and capacity when making a purchasing decision. As a concept, it's relatively simple. Bandwidth affects how much data can get through at any given time, and of course, memory is the space. Some like to explain RAM as being like a highway. The number of lanes which allows more cars to go through represents the bandwidth. The speed limit represents the literal speed, and memory is like a big parking garage that even is going into and out of to help you play video games. If you don't have enough parking lanes or the speed limit is too low, then everything gets bogged down. And if you bring civil engineering into the metaphor, then it falls apart completely. And that's everything. I want to thank the website WePC for 
posting this article, it was hands down the most helpful article that I could find on RAM when I ended up purchasing all of the parts of my new computer. And this is how I ended up figuring out what RAM to choose. So if you could do me a favor and click the link down in the description to go and check them out, that would mean a lot to me. They have a bunch of other really cool, helpful articles to read over if you have any questions about anything regarding gaming, PC gaming and that sort of stuff. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Remember to support it with a like if you did. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.